Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about the 16 books that I read in May. <laughs> So yes, I read 16 books in the month of May, 10 of which were audiobooks, five of them were ebooks, and then one book was a physical read. <laughs> Again, I am the worst at physically reading books at the moment. I don't know why, but if it's not an audiobook listen or it's not something on my phone that I can read, it takes me so long to read so I don't feel like reading them. We're gonna be talking about the books that I read in May. So the way that I usually format these videos is that I talk about the books that were my least favorite first and then I lead up to my favorite book towards the end of the video. We're gonna do a little bit of a different style in this video though because May was definitely the month for rereads. I think like half of the books that I read in May were uh, rereads, so I'm gonna be talking about those first. So I'm going to talk about the five books that I have in a video that I did recently where I reread five of my old favorite books to see if they are still my current favorite. I'll be linking the video down below. I'm not going to be discussing these books at length in this video because I did a whole video about all five of these books. So if you want to know what I think in detail of these books now, be sure to go check out that vlog. So first I reread Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I gave this five stars. This is my reread for the Hunger Games read along that I host with Emma, Peyton, and Lily. That live show is also going to be linked down below. We discussed this book at great length. And again, this is still my favorite book in The Hunger Games. I know unpopular opinion here, but I just stinking love it so much. Then I reread The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. I listened to this one on Audible Escape. This was one of my favorite books growing up in middle school. So our main character, Belly, is 15 and her mom and her mom's best friend like own a beach house together and the moms and all four kids end up going to the beach house every single summer. So Belly and her brother and then Susanna, her mom's best friends, two boys, Conrad and Jeremiah. Belly has always had a huge crush on Conrad, like for forever. It's like a book all talking about how she feels about Conrad and um, how much of a jerk Conrad is because he's growing up and going to college and just being really angsty. <laughs> I decided to not rate this book. You can, again, watch that video to understand the main reason as to why I am not rating it, but it's not like a bad book. I just believe that it was very much prevalent to the time it was written in, like I think 2009. Um, those are my thoughts. <laughs> and you can, again, check out that video for more thoughts. Then I reread one of my favorite young adult fantasy books, Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. I still need to read the sequel. That is up there somewhere. This is about a main character named Zira who is a heartless and heartless people used to be human but a witch can take a heart out of a human's body and put it in a jar and that person is now a heartless and the witch can essentially control them because they have their heart. And our main character Zira is 16. She has been a heartless for two years and the witches tell her that she can have her heart back and live a normal human life if she can go and pretend to be a suitor for the prince and turn the prince into a heartless so that they can control the king and win the war that the witches are in with the humans. I love this book a lot. I will never stop loving this book. It is just an amazing young adult fantasy book that I think that people should read, like more people need to read this book because it's just amazing. It's amazing. I think this book might be an audible escape, but I don't recommend listening to the audiobook. I tried listening to it for my video because this was the only book that I physically had to read this month. I listened to the audiobook and I could not stand the woman narrating. Five seconds in, I was like, nope, not happening. Her voice is not Zero's voice. I, no. <laughs> so. If you're interested in this book, you can go and check out the audiobook, but I don't really recommend it because that's not what our main character sounds like at all. I love Zira so much and I need more people to learn about her and read this story. Then I reread The Edge of Never by J.A. Renwierski. This is one of the first romance books that I ever read, one of the first books that got me into the romance genre. So this is about our main character woman named Cameron. I believe she's 21. Something happens in her home life to where she just wants to get away and get on a Greyhound bus and just go nowhere, just like leave her hometown just like travel and like doesn't know where she's gonna end up. On this Greyhound bus she ends up meeting Andrew Parrish who has some secrets of his own and they end up striking up a friendship that may turn into something more and they may end up going on a little bit of a road trip together throughout the United States. When I first read this book I gave it five stars. I bumped it down to a four 
just because there are some problematic things that happen and I think I was so blinded by the fact that they were one of the first romance books that I ever read so I had nothing to compare it to and how a relationship works and how a healthy relationship is written. Uh, I had a few issues with the ending of this book but um, again if you want to know my in-depth thoughts go check out my reading vlog. And the last book that I read for that video is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Oh my word I love this book so <laughs> much. So if you didn't know, Stephanie Meyer, the author of Twilight, also wrote The Host. This is a post-apocalyptic alien book. This book is not YA, by the way. Our main character woman is, I believe, 20 or 21, but there's no explicit content necessarily in here at all. Uh, so I don't know. It's just an adult book that's kind of like a, a a tame one. There's no explicit content whatsoever. This book is about a main character named Wanda and she is an alien and so Earth now has become a place that has been overrun and taken over by aliens who are like this big and the way they inhabit Earth is by putting themselves into host human bodies and when the alien is put into that body and the human who like owns the body ends up dying. Um, so Wanda, an alien, gets put into Melanie's body. But the thing is, Melanie won't die. Melanie is alive and kicking inside Wanderer's brain. Melanie may have Wanda go and find her lover and her brother for her. Melanie and Wanda's relationship is just so good. Just, this book is amazing. I, it's, it's very, very, very character based and I love that so much. Then I reread the entire A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy by Sarah J Mass. I reread the series with Melissa from She's an Open Book. I will link her channel down below. Um, we decided to buddy read these books together for the fun of it. Um, so the first book is A Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling set in a fantasy land dealing with Faye. Feyre is our main character and she ends up shooting a wolf in the woods but little does she know that that wolf is a fairy. And so the friend to that fairy that she killed comes and searches for her and kidnaps her and takes her to his castle for retribution for killing his friend. The second book is A Court of Mist and Fury. Some say that this is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I can definitely see where that comes from. This is the second book in the trilogy, my favorite. I love it so much. And then the third and final book is A Court of Wings and Ruin. This was my first time listening to A Court of Wings and Ruin on audiobook and I really enjoyed it. All of these books get five stars from me, that's for sure. So now I'm going to be going from my least favorite to favorite from the books that were not reread. <laughs> so first I'm going to talk about The Voyeur by Ellis O'Day. This is a little short novella that I got for free one day off of Amazon. I don't know if it's currently free still but I honestly don't really recommend you go get it. I ended up giving it two stars. So the tropes that I put this book under is a BDSM book, best friends sibling romance, contemporary adult romance, forbidden romance, and it is a short book. So this book takes place in a BDSM club called La Petite Morte Club. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so sorry if that was completely wrong. Patrick is our male main character and he stumbles across a maid in this club and turns out that is his uh, deceased best friend's little sister who ends up working at the club. Little does he know that that's Annie though until after they've done a little something. Annie is watching a couple through one of those mirror window things where like you can see through it but they see a mirror kind of thing so she's cleaning and watching and Patrick stumbles upon her in this room and they end up doing something. Later he like finds out who she actually is and that's the end of the book. Uh, it's like 30 pages long. Apparently their love story is like four books long. Even though this book was only 30 pages, it could easily be a whole entire book by adding all the books together. I thought it was kind of dumb. Didn't really like it at all. Gave it two stars. Next I have Dirty English by Ilsa Madden Mills. I listened to this one off of Audible Escape. So the categories that I put this book under, Audible Escape, New Adult Romance, a retelling because this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling set in college. So this is about our main character named Elizabeth Bennett and she uh, just moved into a new apartment near their college campus that she goes to and her next door neighbor is Declan who is the campus bad boy and he's actually like the big star of the like underground fight club at their college. I don't remember like anything about this book at all. <laughs> I think I finished this on May 1st and so I don't I don't remember what happened in this book. I don't really remember my feelings. It's kind of forgettable. I think I kind of found it boring here and there and I found our main character woman to be very like unlikable. Like I didn't like reading from her perspective at all. Oh there was like a like um like a mystery a little bit of an aspect or like a bad guy was in this book. I'm like why? I don't I was like, why was that even in the book? Like there was a bad guy coming after Elizabeth. Oh my goodness. 
I just, <laughs> this book is rushing back to me. Uh, trigger warning for sexual assault, by the way. That's in here. Definitely. Literally page one. Oh my gosh, everything is coming back to me now that I'm thinking about this book. Elizabeth is sexually assaulted by a boy, her like senior prom, I think. And so like the town finds out about it and like ostracizes her, I think. I don't really remember. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Everything's fuzzy for this book. Next, I have two books that are a part of the Ice Planet Barbarians series by Ruthie Dixon. I love the Ice Planet Barbarians series. I've read every single one of them, including the spinoff books. I love these books a lot, and I need to get caught up on Ruby Dixon's other books because I love Ruby Dixon so much. She's just such a guilty pleasure reader for me. If you didn't know about the Ice Planet Barbarians, they are alien romance books where human women have crash landed on a spaceship on this deserted ice planet but the only inhabitants of this planet are blue aliens and they're very low in like their women population. Live on this planet you need to have a symbiote put in your body called a Kui. The Kui will tell you when your lifelong mate and partner is near. So it's a Faded Mates series too with aliens and uh, I love Faded Mates. I love alien romance so I love this series a lot. So I decided to read the newest Ice Planet Honeymoon book, which is Kira's story with her love interest. This is Ice Planet Variants 3.5. I first read their story like over a year ago, so I kind of forgot what happened. That's the only issue I see with going back for these honeymoon books because I don't really remember these couples. <laughs> because it's so long ago and like I'm on book number like 19 in the series. So um, it's been a while since I've read their story. This is like a 40 page novella just talking about their honeymoon like after they get made it a little fun little vacation they go on together. This has been my favorite uh, honeymoon story so far. I didn't really care for the previous two. So then I read book number 18 in the series Barbarian's Treasure. This one is about Megan and Cashel. Their story was so cute. Um, I ended up giving this one also four stars. So Ruby Dixon is at the point in the Ice Planet Barbarian series where um, she's going back and writing these stories about couples that were mated during like the first books but they hadn't gotten their book yet. So this book is basically getting sucked back in time to when the first book takes place or the second or third one. I'm really loving that because it's just bringing me back to the feelings of the first couple books. I don't know why I keep doing this but every single time that I film a video I end up forgetting to do my shout out mug. It just slips my brain. So different angle, different time but Yes, this is my shout out mug. I try to shout out a person in every single video that I do. So, oh my gosh, I'm bleeding. My nose is bleeding. Anyone just been having really bad nosebleeds because of the weather now? That's what's been going on in my life recently. So, uh, we're gonna ignore this. Anyway, <laughs> very, very, very scatterbrained video. Okay, so today's shout out is this one. Oh, it's a long one. Oh, there's two in here. Just drop that one in. Um, Oh my goodness, this is such a good one. Okay, we have, I'm checking to make sure there's no more blood. Um, we have Vendi from Copper Two Pages. I absolutely love Vendi. She was one of the first friends that I ever made here on booktube. I absolutely adore her. She reads majority of fantasy books, but she reads basically anything. I kind of convinced her to read some romance books. I got her onto the Royally series, which I will talk about later on in this video. She's so supportive and so sweet and so nice. I really recommend her channel if you love fantasy. She reads a wide range of fantasy and like some fantasy books I've never heard about before. Uh, I really recommend Vendi, so please go check out her channel. Next, I read Asteron by Alicia Thorne. It's either Alyssa or Alicia. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name. This book takes place in the city of Sticks. It's basically like a new Greece where Hades has now taken over. It takes place during modern day though. It's kind of like kind of like urban fantasy in a way. I would say it is urban fantasy, yeah. And so this book is about our main character, a woman named Ariadne, and she is an assassin. And she is kind of like the star pupil of this assassin school, but she has been basically abused at this school by the honcho man in charge. She has been dying to escape his like clutches and rules. So another person like anonymously contacts her to go and assassin like Hades's like right hand man. And so it is her journey to try and assassinate Hades like right hand man and best friend because she really wants her freedom. It is their romance together and his name is Asteron and he may or may not be the Minotaur. <laughs> I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was like so promising at the beginning. Like it was so steamy. It like hooked me at the beginning. Like the writing was amazing. But then I don't know, towards the middle and end, it just started to fall flat 
for me. Like she claims to be this assassin, this like assassin of assassins and she didn't really do anything that miraculous or that dangerous. Like she has to go to the labyrinth and like prove her worthiness to some people and the labyrinth is like known to be this like death defying like maze you have to go through and barely anyone survives it. They were talking about the obstacles and I was like none of those sound all that dangerous to me. <laughs> it was really intriguing to me and the beginning was so promising and at the beginning I was like this is gonna be a five star for sure and then it just started to go downhill for me but I still found it really enjoyable and I still recommend this book. Next I have My Favorite Souvenir by Vikeland and Penelope Ward. This was my first book that I've read that's written by them and I really enjoyed it and I will definitely be picking up their books in the future. I read this one off of Audible Escape and it is also on Kindle Unlimited. For categories for this book I put this one in Contemporary Adult Romance, A Forbidden Romance, and Kindle Unlimited. This book is not a summer romance that you can see from the cover. It's not a summer romance. It's actually winter. There's a blizzard that happens in this book. I don't know why the cover <laughs> looks like it's taking place in summer. So this is about our main character, Woman. I can't remember her name at the moment. She ends up going on her honeymoon by herself because her fiance called off their wedding and she didn't wanna like waste the money. She still wanted to go on this vacation honeymoon and she decides to leave early, but on the way to the airport to leave early, a blizzard comes in and she goes back to the hotel to get her room back, but it's already booked because everyone's trying to find a room to stay away from this blizzard. So while she is waiting in the lobby for another hotel to try and snag a room, she witnesses a man pretend to be a guest that hasn't shown up yet so that he can get a room. And so she pretends to be his sister so she can have a place to sleep at night instead of sleeping in the lobby or something. They end up pretending to be brother and sister. For the majority of this book, they have no idea who the other person's real name is. They end up like going on a little bit of an adventure road trip together before they have to face the reality of their real lives. It was really, really cute. I really enjoyed it. My only issues are the things that happened towards like the end of the book. I don't know, it was just kind of cheesy and I kind of got annoyed with how far it was getting dragged out. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Gave this one four stars. Next, I have Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling, the second book in the Fallen Men series. I really enjoyed this one. So the categories that I put this book in, age gap romance, contemporary adult romance, forbidden romance, Kindle Unlimited, motorcycle club romance, romance with disability representation, and a single parent romance. And it is a taboo book. This book is about Lou and Zeus. And when Lou was seven years old, there's a 19 age gap difference. 19 plus 7 is however Zeus was when they met. Um, when she was 7 she ended up being in the middle of this gunfight at a church. Zeus ends up saving her life but in saving her life he actually kills somebody so he ends up being sent to jail. Throughout the many years he is in jail him and Lou decide to be like pen pal buddies and write letters to each other and through the years that Lou is writing to Zeus she ends up realizing that she's falling in love with him and like jumps to when she's 17 and when Zeus is older and um, when Zeus is out of jail. It's their romance. It is very taboo, dark, steamy, <laughs> forbidden. I really enjoyed my time reading this. I gave this one four stars. I really loved it. I don't know, it's just not one of my favorite books of all time, so I didn't give it five stars, and it kind of fell flat once the like characters got together. I don't know, it just wasn't that appealing or intriguing to me anymore once they got together. I don't know. I'm in a weird space with romance in the moment. I haven't given a book five stars for a romance book in a very long time. So I really did enjoy this one though and I can't wait to continue on with the series. And the last book that I'm going to be talking about today is Dirty Charmer by Emma Chase. This is one of my most anticipated books for 2020 and I'm so happy that I read this one. So the categories that I put this book under, Audible Escape, Contemporary Adult Romance, and Royalty Romance. This is the first book in the Bodyguards series, which is a spinoff book for the Royally series by Emma Chase, which is one of my favorite romance series of all time. That is a royalty romance series. So this one is a bodyguard romance. Abigail Haddock is a duchess in Wesco, which is a made-up country. Her family ends up hiring our main character man named Tommy to be her bodyguard and Tommy was in the Royally series. He used to be a bodyguard to the prince um, but he ended up like uh, quitting his job and making his own bodyguard business with one of his friends. He becomes a bodyguard to Abigail who is 
in her residency studying to be a surgeon. Another thing about this book is that both Abigail and Tommy aren't looking for a relationship at all but then they meet each other and things change. Things change. So I really enjoyed this one. I highly recommend. I recommend reading the Royally series first just because a few people pop up in this one and you'd probably get more out of it and know who these people are if you read that series but I also think you could read it as standalone so whatever you want to do go for it but I really enjoyed this one and I highly recommend if you're into bodyguard romances. But anyways there you have it those are all 16 books that I read in the month of May. Uh, let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! <laughs>